uh, to start. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mary Sabatino from Gallery Lalong, and we're here with Jama Plenza, who is with us from his, I would say, confinement studio in Barcelona, where he made the drawings at home. Ah, so there's someone joining from Dakar. Uh, people can tell us where they're coming from. I can't see now uh, all the names of the people participating, but we now have 50 people in the room, which is a beautiful number. So, Jama, before everyone joined, you and I were speaking about so many conversations we've had from working together so many years. Um, we've worked together since the late 90s, uh, and I can always uh, remember because I was pregnant with my daughter, who's now going to be 21. Um, and um, you have been a sculptor uh, working with the body, working with spirituality, working with collective memory, and working with materials for many, many years. Um, so I thought we could maybe start uh, by looking at some works that you have made, you know, sign some significant recent works, um, and uh, that that could help us all to sort of orient to our um, to our conversation before we start to talk about your drawings in depth. So the first image we're seeing is Jamé working on the drawings. Uh, this is and Jamé, of course, I'm just going to give a little background as we go through the works, but please uh, interrupt me. So the first image we're going to see um, is your wonderful retrospective that was at the Makba Museum uh, last year. It closed last April, but opened in the fall of the winter before. Uh, this is an installation view of um, where we see part of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and a sphere. The next uh, image is also an installation view where we see the whole Declaration, Declaration of the Rights of Men. Men. Um, and uh, the next image is an outdoor piece, The Heart of Trees, where you worked with the body, always the body, and the names of rivers. Actually, this is not The Heart of Trees. This is The Heart of Rivers, which was shown outside. Um, at the same time that there was this show in Barcelona, we also saw the installation at the Reina Sofia, Invisibles. Uh, and we're gonna talk a little more about Invisibles later because you've done a recent series of drawings, but these were suspended there. They really are invisible here, but they were monumental suspended um, uh, heads, three heads in that beautiful cross uh, transept at the uh, Palacio Cristal. And that was because you won the, the Velasquez Prize, correct, Shama? That, that right. was, yes. Um, and the next image that we're going to see um, is Talking Continents, which was an exhibition, actually 2013, quite a while ago. But I chose it because I noticed that um, we have two or three friends who hosted this as a traveling exhibition. And these were suspended figures with your language of letters, um, which were formed around clouds. Um, the next image uh, is uh, from Yorkshire. And it's a similar thing. And I noticed that our Dearest, beloved Claire Lily is in the audience. And so one of Jean May's most gorgeous exhibitions was at Yorkshire Sculpture Park. And here is the catalog. Um, these are two heads, Nuria and Irma, which are now with a friend in the United States. So this is the beautiful landscape there in, uh, um, in, in Yorkshire. Um, that, was, that was really an extraordinary show and a beautiful collaboration. Um, I know. guess if I, could, if I could say something. Yes, of course. Interrupt uh, me. Yeah, sorry. No, I guess no. that image is representing pretty well the concept of invisible that I was developing later in the Venice Biennial at San Giorgio Maggiore in the church. Uh, mm. of San Giorgio Maggiore. And also a little bit later, the Reina Sofia Palacio de Cristal. This idea that the sculpture 
is not blinding anything behind. Instead, it's embracing it. It's more a concept of a soul. It's trying to transform it into a physical element in our invisibility. And, and I guess in a, a period of today, we have an invisible audience today, which I felt, I, 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 I felt the, the energy, even if I could not see them. And I think it's, exactly. it's part of, I, I, I think it's very beautiful that you are showing that image from, from Yorkshire, because it's representing, in my opinion, pretty well the moment of today. This, this quantity of energy all around, even if we cannot see the people with, with, which is with us today. That, that's, what can I say? What can I say? Um, so the next image that um, we'll talk to, we'll, we'll talk about is the most recent um, public project you and I worked on together. So you're working on uh, a really exciting one now, which you can tell the audience about. So this is Voices, which is at 30 Hudson Yards, um, which while well, Hudson Yards was closed uh, to the public, people could still see the piece from outside. Um, and Jamie, do you wanna just tell a little about, because this is the first time you use the sphere in multiple, uh, multiple formats, correct? Well, actually, it, it was the first time for me to, to have the possibility to, to make an intervention in, in, a, in a lobby in New York. I guess uh, it, a lobby in New York is one of the icons of the public art in that city, I guess. And, and I felt very proud about it because especially that lobby, which has two levels, is connecting two avenues and also is uh, uh, putting in touch people from many different concepts, uh, traditions, or languages even, because it's also a lot of commercial centers all around. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a crazy place, a beautiful place in Chelsea. Okay, and I decided to transform my concept of a mix of languages into spheres, which I guess is probably the most perfect geometrical shape, which always mm -hmm. in expansion. And I guess when I'm dreaming about the, the, the symphony of the planets, this, this idea that you mentioned before with talking continents, which are suspended, this idea of people floating in between. I decided to transform the, the voices into planets and the real people walking in the, in the lobby, just passing through every day to go to work or whatever, to, to, to enjoy a restaurant, whatever. And, and I'm so happy because that place has escalators which are changing the level of the view of the piece all the time. And, uh, and you have, well, the, the, the visual representation of the voice, which for me is the most beautiful music of our body. And, and I guess it, it's, a, it's a perfect combination of this idea of geometry, the harmony, voices and movement of real people in between the piece. I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the most beautiful projects for me. Thank you. Um, the next image is also the family of letters, though with a difference. And this was done for Mont Montreal. Montreal. Um, I'm saying it correctly, um, uh, in Canada. And I think we did this two, three years, three years ago. Um, it's again a new, f another family of your work. You always, one thing I love, Jama, is how you speak of artworks as families, and yep. families <laughs> of, um, and there's always a reference in your work to the community, whether it's a community of letters or symbols, making a word, making a paragraph, making a poem or people, and I think what's beautiful about this piece is how people can gather in it and how it's illuminated at night and how you chose to have it facing the entrance of the city because I remember when we went there, everyone was, was surprised at the position you chose. They thought that the piece should, and can you explain, because that, that is so quintessentially genre. Well, actually, that piece is part, as you mentioned, of a family of words, which is in that case called it source, but it's also roots. This idea that we are coming of us from a piece of earth, 
a very specific dot, a very specific mm -hmm. place in the world. And that is a point of the part. And, and we spend all, all our life creating with ourselves bridges to connect with others. And that kind of uh, elongated letters that are trying to, to, to come out of the earth and create the shape of a human body with our letters, with our alphabets, with our concepts, with our dreams, with our ideas. I, I think it's a, a, a nice portrait of humanity, it's, which was my intention. And at the same time becomes like a house, a shelter, a poetical shelter that protects you from the mosquitoes of life. That is <laughs> and, and, and I like when people are walking in between the lines and, 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 and they are inside the, the, this big body, this cupola made out with the shape of, of, of a, a human figure. And, uh, and it's a kind of, let's say, a poetical architecture of the body. You know? it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a place where everybody's invited. It's, it's a place that could represent any one of us. Exactly. Um, so the next slide is uh, another family of works um, of the monumental white uh, heads. Um, there are a number of them, and I noticed that uh, our dear friend Brooke um, is online watching, and you did one in Madison uh, Square Park, uh, a different, a different uh, portrait. Um, this uh, woman was born in Rio, and we remember that she was born in the waters um, and now has moved from Rio de Janeiro to Chicago and has now found its home in Miami. Um, is there something you want to share about this piece or a memory? This piece gave us both well, guess, lots of great guess, hair. <laughs> yeah, probably one of the pieces that you and I uh, really work together in a very intense week in Rio de Janeiro, in the beach, waiting that the tie was perfect to install the piece. Uh, I guess, I guess uh, the, 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 the view of the piece at the Botafogo Bay, right in front of the Sugar Long, right uh, in the other side of the Corcovado, was, was a really an incredible experience. I guess that piece for me was, well, I have to say, uh, something different because I remember one week after I finished the installation that everybody was a little bit in shock to install something in the bay, something in this amazing landscape. That one, one bank in, in Rio de Janeiro did a publicity with a picture of my piece in the bay. And I like it, the, the, the motto, because he said, well, we already knew that Rio was beautiful. Thanks mm. to that, now it's unforgettable. Mm. And I like it because many times I'm defending the importance of art in the public space, not because the object in itself, but the capacity that art could make more beautiful the things around. I think that is very important. It's not only the sculpture or the intervention of the artist, the object in itself is the capacity that thanks to art, everything looks more beautiful. You transform the view of the of the, uh, the people using that space. And in Rio it was incredible because could you imagine something more beautiful than Rio de Janeiro? Yes, it's possible. And that I think it's, <laughs> it was incredible, a, a tremendous experience. And then the piece was moving to Chicago for two years to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Crown Fountain. I asked to install the piece in the park and it was beautiful. And then was when uh, Jorge Perez uh, fall in love and bought the piece for the museum in Miami. And I asked obviously to install the piece in the edge of the water because I guess it's a piece that now is just w facing the entrance of the Miami Harbor. From, from, I think it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful end of a beautiful history. So thank you. So Jaime, let's talk a little bit about drawings. I mean, yesterday you, when we were, having our pre-conversation, you said, the wonderful thing about making drawings is that you have no conflict with your materials, that um, it's a very fluid uh, dynamic between your brain and your hand. And, you know, I think most people, when they 
think of you, they think of works like this one, like the uh, Awilda or Voices or any of your monumental works. But you have a very intimate and long practice with drawings. In fact, we even did, a sh at the same time that you had a piece like this in Madison Square, you wanted to do a show at the gallery and you said, I don't want to show sculpture, I want to show drawings. That's and right. so um, we right. did the drawing show, uh, Anonymous, which were, uh, uh, I think, were there 50? It, there it were was, a lot of them. It was at the same time that we did the installation at Madison Square Park in New York. Mm -hmm. Echo. Echo was in the park and you did the show in your gallery with my drawings. It was a fantastic installation. Yeah. So drawings, I mean, you said that uh, you have been working on 51 drawings since also, in addition to the drawings behind you, which we can look at later, the confinement drawings, you said you've been working on 51 drawings for your other, uh, the other love that you have for music and the opera. Can you right. tell the audience a bit about those drawings or the project? I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's always people that knows my work, knows very well my love for Shakespeare, but especially for Macbeth. And the drawings that you have now in the screen that was part of the show was drawings also based in the idea of Shakespeare. But, but uh, now I will do the opera Macbeth from Verdi. It's a mix of uh, 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 British history with an Italian composer, which I love this kind of shocks. Uh, probably it was similar when I did my show at Yorkshire Scout Park. It was a Mediterranean guy in the British landscape. I mean, <laughs> and, and it would be wonderful when Verdi decided to do Macbeth, which in Italian is Macbetto, which I think is beautiful. Okay. And, uh, and obviously, before to anything else, I did all my concepts in drawings. And, and it's a group of 51 beautiful drawings, I, in my point of view, that thanks to that I could develop with my assistants to develop the project, which will be in, in uh, 2023 in the Opera House in Barcelona. And, uh, and it's very exciting because I did many operas years ago in Salzburg, in Rome, in Paris in many places, but uh, then I stop and that will be my, my first project since, uh, I don't know, 15 years. Or, and, and it's pretty exciting. And obviously the point of the part is the drawing. Mm. As a concept. And so can, can we talk a little bit about what drawing means for you and why you choose to draw such as, um, I have, we have a few suites we can look, work in series, just like you're working in series in sculpture. Can you talk a little bit about, for example, the sweet soul drawings, um, uh, your, search for the, your search for the material of the paper and you know, how, these, how language is integrated into it? Um, Actually, Tears, which is on the screen, is behind me, so you can yeah. really see the scale. Yeah, well, you, you know my work, and, and you probably agree with me that my point of the part is normally a vibration, something that, for me, becomes more and more important and necessary to, to make something visual about. But normally, it's a poetical concept, it's just a brief. And, and in that case, it was thanks to an amazing quantity of paper that I bought in Korea and Seoul many years ago that I was keeping as a treasure in my studio until the moment I fell, it was used that paper. Maybe it was waiting 16 years or 17 years in the studio. And, uh, and, and, and that is something that it happens pretty often with me. I, I remember I was, I was in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo, when I was 20 years ago, it means 40 years ago. And, and I decided to do a project there and I had to wait 38 years to do the project of a wilder, the project that you mentioned before. Okay, with the sweet soul was similar. I love Korea, I love soul. And, but it, I had to wait the right energy to do those drawings. After those drawings, it was the sweet Tokyo, the sweet Paris, several suites that it was like the places of the countries that I love. And, and, 
and, and well, we can talk a little bit more about it, but the show that you have now in the gallery or, or, or the drawings that they have behind are also a kind of sweet generate with this isolation that we spent during April, but it was thinking about this, Elliot. And, uh, and, uh, and that let's, was let's because- Let's look at them. Let's, let's look at those drawings. These uh, are the sweet, sweet berries. It was a couple of drawings. I did many of that group, which is the mix of my faces with that kind of spheres. It's, uh, you probably could find many of my symbology in the drawings, obviously, because, well, the, you show voices at Hudson Yards, the spheres. Here is also the idea of invisibles, the faces mm -hmm. with line. Well, uh, I mean, uh, I'm, uh, as you know, I'm working a lot with the, the, the Declaration of the Human Rights uh, 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 in curtains and text, in drawings, in, in, many, in many different directions since 20 years. I, I have a kind of obsessions that are coming back and back and back and forth. Let's look at the, um, uh, we, we'll go back to the invisibles because you also have another online drawing show of those. But in these drawings, when we spoke yesterday, you said in opposition to the invisibles, which we'll return to, you said they're cinematic. You said they're, st they're stopped, which I hadn't thought of, that they were frames or the word still. I thought was referring to the stillness of the time when nothing is moving. But were you thinking of a cinematic still, Shama? Yeah, those drawings are, are paying a certain homage to cinema, which I love. But it's this kind of motionless. It's completely frozen. It's the kind of frames when you can see probably the images yourself without any technology. It's, it's not exactly a photo or a picture. It's more the frame of something longer, but taking only this exactly moment for us in time. Because I fell many times in that situation during those months. And, and that links with other drawings that I did years ago also. Because as you know, my families, are, I suppose has a beginning, but never an, an, an end. I'm going back to the family maybe two or three years later. It's not something that starts and finish. And, and those drawings are inside that idea of uh, frames, stills, uh, this kind of motionless. And, and if you show others, you will see that it's always this kind of strange figures uh, facing something, watching something in a very uh, uh, calm and quiet way. And, uh, and I like because I mixed it a lot with the concept of psychiatry, which uh, for me are very important, these kind of ideas, that if we have a little bit of everything, we are right. The problem is when you have a little bit too much of some, some of those concepts. And, uh, and during those months, I thought a lot about it, this, this kind of insomnia, uh, hysteria, all, the, all those things. Um, and, uh, so did you feel that you were expressing what people were feeling at that time? Or was it that direct? Or the, the images came to you? And also I see that you're using photography in, in these drawings as well in a kind of collage. Um, I don't know. Uh, you remember that uh, 10 years ago, a little bit more, I did a project in, near Liverpool in St. Helens called Dream. It was a big head. And I kept a very, a very nice relationship with the ex-miners mm. living there. And, and I remember in April, I had several conversations with one of the ex-miners because it was a very high level of suicide in that area. Because a lot of people lost the job now, in, during that time. In, and, and people was drinking more than normal and suicides. And, and those guys asked me to do a document or something to send to the people. And, and, and we were talking a lot about uh, this kind of problems when people feel alone in a, in a certain, uh, you know, in, in, in possibility to solve the situation, you know? And, and, and I guess those two, three, four months of pandemia was in certain times and certain moments, the silence was so strong and intense that I, I was concerned about people, you know? And, and I was thinking a lot about that problem, which is also invisible, which is the, 
well, the, the mental diseases. Many times it's, it's better to broken your leg because it's obvious. But when you have a problem, a mental disease problem, what you show, what you can explain. And, 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 and I, I mentioned many times that the most important things in life normally are invisible. And, and, and this little uh, virus that we have is almost invisible also. <laughs> And, and, and look at the disaster that it was creating in the world. And, but as, as you know, I, I love people. I'm thinking a lot about the human being. Obviously, I'm thinking a lot about the mental diseases also. Coming from the most important part of our body, which is the brain. And, 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 and this wild brain that could push us to strange boundaries, you know, this, this dark and humid area where we are dreaming, but at the same time, we have all the most nightmares and, and problems. Okay, I think it was time to think about a, a dark corner also in mm -hmm. our life. And there are some dark, dark corners in these drawings, which we look can at that, see. But it was always hopeful and positive because- Exactly, he's looking at a heart. Yeah. I mm -hmm. decided since long, long time ago, to try to send with my work always uh, a message of hope. Uh, that it was the decision. Mm. Because uh, I think it's important that art is not only to create beauty, which I, th I think is, is key, it's very important. We have also to, to create this, the, 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 to, I don't know, the beauty of life, to, the, to, to send a message that probably could be I don't know, better your life, but it's the only one. And it's important to try to enjoy and to really uh, share with the others that uh, enormous, uh, I don't know, gift, which is to be alive. Exactly. And, and, and my, my work is always trying to pass that information to people. Probably that is the reason that in that drawing is not only this uh, problem of isolation or solitude, but also thanks to that is creating a heart which is sharing with the others. Absolutely. And in fact, one is very hopeful. It talks about utopia. There's one of the drawings where... Um, uh, yeah, it, uh, the next, next. You can go next. I think it's utopia. That's yeah. it. Well, I guess many people say utopia in a negative way, but um, I love to say utopia in a positive way. Because I guess we have to dream, even if it's over our capacity, over possibilities. As you know, I'm doing a very, very utopic project, call it Utopia in Grand Rapids right now, that is taking years. And, but for me, I guess a sculptor should be uh, in the sight of Utopia and also very near of humanity that we are still dreaming to be better. Or, or, to, or to share with our brothers or to friends or, or people from other countries our dreams and our capacity to, 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 to do good things. I was a little bit concerned with the pandemic because I was, I was afraid that to fell in the temptation to consider the other the responsible of my problems. You know, another mm -hmm. country, another person, you know, the, they, they are bringing the virus to me. They are the infection to me. I'm clean, I'm perfect. The mm -hmm. others are wrong. And that it's a temptation many times in society that we have to avoid completely. You know, the only way to, to, to resist and, and to survive is together. And that is for me the, the main message. And that is probably an utopic message, I know but I prefer to keep my romantic side and insist that to well, talk we, is still possible. We, I don't think it's romantic at all. I think it's a fundamental quality of your work and of you as a human being, which are quite intertwined, which is that many, many of us together are more important and more powerful than us alone. And this pandemic, which is why I wanted to show these drawings with the people in isolation, as you said, has drawn us apart, but we need the feeling that we are still together. Jaume, do you think it's possible to pan the camera so people can see the diversity of drawings behind you? Did you work on them in this room? 
uh, well, I could try to, to I don't know. I, I'm not so good with Zoom. I, I apologize. <laughs> I'm not so, sure if it's so they they look to be of a kind of s small scale. Um, well, uh, the uh, um, it's a collage. It's a concept of collage mm -hmm. with, with photos that I'm doing around the world. Mm -hmm. That that guy it was the, uh, the cello in Paris. I remember, or that was a a blacksmith. I don't remember well working and and he's. You, I don't know if you can see that he's doing the 2020, the oh. number of the year, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, with, with metal. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. Uh, and here is, is a group of people with frames of, can you hear me? Which mm -hmm. is one of the, the sentences that I've been developing in, you, you'll probably remember in my documentary. Right. Or, right. Of course, in many places, the question mark. Mm -hmm. The question mark. I, I think, uh, I, I don't know, I, I think the question, question mark is for me very. Working on these drawings at the same time as the invisible drawings in the other online show? or Yeah, yeah. Yes. That, that is my chaotic personality. I could not do better. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just go back for a second and look at those uh, invisibles. And then I also wanted to ask you. That is a beautiful thing. Uh, yeah, well, it's nice to see them all like this. And are the materials, yeah, so these are the invisibles, which is the other online show you have at Gray Gallery. Yeah. The idea is good, two or better. Um, and so these are not photographic, though. You no, no, that, that is it's done with pastel mm -hmm. and, and, and dry pastel. And, 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 and it's... Uh, well, it's beautiful because it's more uh, free in the way, no? It's more the exercise to think about the head. Uh, I, I've been talking many times that for me the head is the palace of wisdom. It's the place of, of dreams. It's like a, an amazing architecture where the most beautiful and the more dark, the, 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 our capacity in our brain to generate images. The rest of our body is amazing also. But the central... The hardcore of everything is in our brain. And, and, and um, normally I'm working a lot heads, as you know, in many different ways. That is inspired or is coming from the group of invisibles, uh, Benis, Biennial, or, or Palacio Cristal, Reina Sofia in Madrid. And, uh, and as far as, uh, obviously everything has been changed, but my intention was to show at Grey Gallery, also two, two heads with mesh, mesh heads. And, and those drawings were very, very well working together. Okay, everything has changed with the pandemic, but the drawings are there. And obviously, I, I'm working those kind of drawings. Uh, the, the drawings that you are showing in the gallery, at the Long Gallery, now in New York. But uh, I finished yesterday. A drawing made with letters and, and, and numbers. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm a little bit chaotic as a guy. I mean, uh, and, and, and everything is fluid. I never try to impose me nothing. When I'm in the studio, I'm just making drawings. And suddenly, uh, this, this, this uh, feeling stops and I could spend weeks and weeks without a single drawing. And uh, suddenly, with returning, I spend weeks and weeks making drawings. You, you know, it's uh, I follow my instinct and my feelings. And I guess drawing should be the most free part in your work. It should be almost automatic in the way to work. And the drawings that you are showing in, in New York, I love because it's a mix of, of photography and, and, and drawing. You know? It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a collage with my photos and my drawings and I and think it's very nice. Black, what are, are the blacks that are in these drawings and the black that is in the drawings that we're showing? The it's the blacks, same pastel. pastel. It's pastel. And then I'm using also stamps which uh, with uh, of typography and I'm, I'm using uh, ink for that. But is uh, everything is inside the same kind of black color. Also, the shadow in the photographies, as the, in the feet of this guy, for example, is also pastel. And this guy is one of my assistants. 
I'm taking photos of them because I, I, I spend more time with them than nobody else in the world, obviously. And I know them from all postures. <laughs> exactly. and, and many times you said, don't move, don't move. And I take a photo of this guy, uh, it's called Rafael. And, and, uh, and I think has a, a perfect body to be from the back, you know, I think it's, <laughs> I love this guy from the back, it's fantastic. Well, you often, Jaume, are showing us the back of a sculpture. That's and, true. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's very important for us to think of changing our own view and changing our hierarchy of what we think is important to see from the front or the back. And sculpture certainly teaches us that all views are important. Yeah, because you know, in, 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 in a sculpture, many times you listen to the, the word frontality. Mm -hmm. And I hate that, that word because a sculpture has not frontality, it has a direction to look at that, which mm -hmm. is not the same. And I love many times to install the piece that you see the first time the back, because you are curious to, to try to find where the piece is looking at. It's exactly. more important that point than the sculpture in itself. And that, for example, you remember that we did that in Montreal, which is, uh, people were a little bit uh, uh, concerned, but why the piece is not facing the entrance? No, and I remember uh, people asking me, uh, and, and it was very important in, in Miami also, when you arrive to the museum, you see the back of the head, not the face. Well, and, and, and in that drawing as well, you see the person from the back. Uh, in Barcelona, we have a, a very beautiful museum of Romanesque art, mm -hmm. art from the 9th, 10th, 11th century. It was a plenty of churches in the Pyrenees, and they brought all those sculptures and paintings to that museum in Barcelona. And I remember, of course, it was a, a beautiful image of the Madonna in front, but the most beautiful is without the clothes, the, the boot from the back, because it was so intense, so beautiful. And, and, and I always kept that idea that the back of one person, the back of one object, it's very inspiring because you imagine the rest. And, and also the direction where this person or that object is looking at. And, and that for me is very important. Thank you. So, Jaume, one last question, and then I have a couple of questions from the audience that they've sent us, um, is, what is the project? Can you tell us a little about the Grand Rapids project and its genesis and uh, uh, what you've done there? Well, uh, uh, I was invited to do in the Mayer Sculpture Garden at, in Grand Rapids a project uh, to decorate the, the welcoming room in the new museum that they are building up over there. And uh, well, uh, many times uh, when they invite me with one space, uh, well, for me, it becomes a dream. Uh, and it, it is not a job, it's not a commission, it's more than that. It's a laboratory. And, it, I'm, and, uh, and I covered it completely, the four walls of the space with four faces, one face per wall. And every wall is about 26 meters long, but six meters and a half. That means it's a pretty important area. And I'm, I'm doing four uh, faces carved in white marble coming from Vietnam. It's an incredible translucent marble, which looks, which is floating. It will be probably one of the most beautiful rooms in the world, completely mental. It's not almost shadows. It's so beautiful. And, uh, and, and that for me is one of the most exciting projects. And also we are finishing for uh, a pier in New Jersey mm -hmm. that will be open uh, in uh, spring next year, uh, facing uh, more or less the, 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 the area where the World Trade was at that time in the, uh, and uh, it's the Holland Tunnel, you know, more or less. And, uh, and it's very exciting because it's about 22 meters tall, it's ahead in the position of silence, which I guess would be beautiful. And I hope, I'm preparing, I'm finishing to work a show, I hope in New York in a gallery called Le Long. 
<laughs> yes, a pandemic show. Very exciting. <laughs> so, Shama, one of our um, audience members asked if you could talk about the interaction between drawings and sculptures, and if the sculptures give you ideas for drawings. Well, it's a, it's a very interesting question. Uh, thank you to do that question because uh, working drawings or working sculptures are in parallel. It's not, an, of, I suppose, obviously, it's an interaction in my brain, but I'm not, I'm not using the drawing as a sketches of a piece. Or, or, uh, uh, I'm trying to, to work in parallel. Obviously, uh, in the case that we are mentioned, Invisibles, uh, uh, the, the invisibles are coming from the idea to transform the virtual lines of 3D in my computer into a physical uh, uh, sculpture. That was a crazy work years ago. And, uh, and I kept in my mind this idea to create volume with lines. And that is something that... For example, in the drawings, uh, at Le Long Gallery are completely different. Uh, there are more just flashes in my brain, moments of I could visualize uh, the, these people watching something more like in a movie. Or for example, the Soul uh, uh, Suite uh, or Tokyo, which is more poetical elements, tears or, or rain or Mediterranean or something just in a sphere, something just dropping down like tears, no? which is the, the ink is always falling down for gravity. Well, I, I guess it's something that I could not do in a sculpture. When I'm doing a drawing, it's because in a sculpture it's impossible. When I'm doing a sculpture, it's because it's impossible in drawing. Every technique has a tremendous capacity to talk about one element or one area of our ideas, photography, poetry, when you are writing a text, it's necessary to do it with words. You could not do a drawing or, 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 or a sculpture. And, and, and since always, I don't know why, I did drawings, I did the sculptures and I did etchings. I'm working a lot prints, mm. which, which is not here now, but prints for me are also very important because it's an amazing laboratory of ideas also. Um. Thank you, Jama. Another question someone had is about the relationship or the merging and integration of photography um, with your drawings. I mean, one thing, what I think is so amazing about your work, so 21st century about the way you work with portraiture is how you integrate photography um, and the sculpture becomes almost weightless. Yeah. Um, so this particular question is, do the photos inspire the drawings or do you have an image and then make or find a photo? What is the, how do the two work together? Well, I've been talking many times about uh, the wish in my sculpture or, or, or the intention in my work to merge photography mm -hmm. and sculpture, which seems something in contradiction. Photography is capturating the most evanescent moment. Yeah. And a sculpture, it seems that it's trying to create something for eternity. Mm. And this contradiction, the most ephemeral and the most uh, et eternal in together. Okay, I remember one day we did a show in your gallery, and for me a very important show, key show. We, we, we were showing three heads in fiberglass in the end when you was walking inside the gallery, seeing those three illuminate heads on the bottom of it, it was like a hologram, I remember. Mm. It was not anymore a sculptor, it, it was photography in the space. That for me was a key moment because I understood that it was in the right path. My intention was to merge photography and sculpture. The head that you mentioned in, in Miami, which was before in, in, in Rio de Janeiro, it's, it, it, you are unsure if it's Photoshop or it's real. It seems that you passed with Photoshop something in, 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 in the landscape. I love that. Even Invisibles has this kind of a strange aura of something like a hologram because it's based completely in photography. Okay, 
In the case of my drawing, it's more primitive. It's more just taking photos, cutting and past, because I could not think so much about it, just automatic, dynamic world. Uh, in the sculpture, probably, it's more after uh, an incredible reflection and thinking about it. But probably both are uh, coming from the same wish, which is to try to make photography, sculpture, that means uh, ephemer and eternity. Thank you. So this is a complex question. So um, this asks if drawing um, versus sculpture um, is, an ex is a way to go back to something essential. Um, uh, and he, I believe it's a he, parallels with the idea that the world needs to reset today, that we need to be more humble and reset. And do you feel that that kind of reset or going back to essentials is why you've done two big or three or four big groups of drawings uh, during this pause period? I don't know. It's a very interesting question. Honestly, uh, many people during the pandemic was asking me or in interviews or things like that, uh, are you creating a lot in that moment? Are you creating? And I said, no, I don't know what's happened. It's everything is new. I'm, I'm trying to understand what's happened. I'm sure that something will come out later. And uh, because in, in, in important shocks, you, you, you need also a time to, 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 to really understand what's happened. Many times I've been uh, comparing sculpture or, or my art with a gardener. When you are planting a tree, the tree spends a certain time with problems in the leaves because he's trying to get the roots in the right place. It's a new place. It's so brutal to take one tree from one place and to pass to another. The trees, it has a shock. Let's spend a little time on the tree, it gets relaxed. I guess the, the last month has been for me very intense ideas. And I, I guess now it's coming the right moment to, to calm and to, to see what will be in the future in a very humble way. Mm -hmm. I like that way to mention humble. I guess uh, we, we need in, in, in our world today uh, this kind of attitude. So this is be our last question. Um, a, a listener wants to know about works, uh, the spirit of Julia, because you will be exhibiting this summer. And they wanted to know about Julia, the spirit of Julia. <laughs> but I don't remember who is Julia, who is the original Julia, or well, if it's important. I mean, maybe I think what it is important for people to know is that each name that you give a sculpture at one time, though the person is transformed, it comes from a specific person and a specific identity, generalized person. That's right. Well, uh, just to, to talk a little bit in a more uh, wide range, it's... Uh, as everybody knows, when I finished my project in Chicago, the Crown Fountain, I decided to keep on the idea of portraits, but only with young women. This concept that uh, I always thought uh, memory is female and future is female. A guy is just a nice accident in between. Okay. <laughs> and, and, um, and, I, and, and, and it was in 2004, 2005 that I finished. Since that moment, 50 years ago, I've been developing portraits. Maybe I have around 40 portraits in my portrait gallery. Scanning the head of girls, uh, scanning the heads of young women, because that person will disappear. When I finish to scan that person, that person don't exist anymore. That means that the Julia that this person is asking, don't for sure, it's evolving and continuous, but my Julia don't exist anymore. She becomes an icon that represents all of us. But she was a specific, as you said. And Julia was a girl from the Basque Country that somebody introduced me. Uh, the parents came to my studio with her. I 
took, I did the scan. And sometimes it happens that few of those persons or several of those persons becomes more important than others because I don't know, uh, I don't know, they have a specific head, I don't know. The one in Rio de Janeiro, a wilder, I did a lot of portraits of a wilder. Uh, Carlotta, I did several. Uh, Ray Ray, I did. And I guess Julia is one of those. Um, the last, the last sculpture that I did with Julia was this hat in Madrid, 12 meters tall. And it was impossible. People in Madrid are sending signatures to the municipality, please don't touch that piece, that piece don't move here. And the sponsors of the project that wanted to take the piece to somewhere else, it's the piece in two years installed at the Plaza Colón and they could not touch it. And obviously that is very beautiful, but they could not explain why. I remember one day I took a taxi and, and they passed it right in front of Julia and the taxi drivers understood I was a tourist and it starts to explain me the piece to me. And I said, but what's that? I said, and she said, well, it's amazing. It seems Photoshop in the space, he told me. And I was so happy because finally it was that. It's just something, well, you probably agree with me that in the cities, it's nothing completely white and nothing completely black. We are always in the gray, in, the, in, in between. And, and this piece is completely white, like echo when it was at Madison Square Park that now is in Seattle, or, or, or a wilder which is now in, 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 in Miami. I guess uh, it's on the color, the shape, but it's also the aura. Julia had an incredible soul. And I'm happy that uh, some of those people catch that soul. I'm not trying to describe one shape, I'm trying to bring a box, fill it up with a soul, an energy. And, and when a an sculptor accomplishes that for me is a, is, is a goal, I'm very happy. Because uh, I guess a sculptor has a tremendous capacity to talk about invisible. And the soul is something that we cannot describe, is similar like beauty. We cannot describe beauty, but we can recognize immediately that. And, 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 and believe me that Julia, I don't remember how old it could be today, but, but 20, I don't remember. I did the portrait five, five years ago or six years ago, but uh, this person don't exist. It, it is, is a dream, is a, you, you know, it's an icon that could represent any one of us. Well, Shama, even though the questions are coming fast and furious, but I think the idea of a dream and the idea of something which no longer exists, but in our memory, but feeds us is a good moment to stop and thank you from taking time from your very busy schedule to talk with us. Um, we um, are going to send again the, the link. We've discovered that we can't really show well the documentary, Can You Hear Me, on Zoom at the same time. So we're going to send again the link to everyone so that they can um, download it and watch it themselves. They'll have a better quality. And for all the people who have um, just been sending all these questions, um, I hope there's a way. I will answer them. Um, they're, they're, they're not as um, I think I can answer them on your behalf. Um, but thank you everyone for coming today and thank you for joining us and being, as yeah. Jeremy says, together, right? It was wonderful to be together in our invisible position, but I, I felt the energy, I think it was great. Thank you, Mary, to give me that. You. Thank you to our, to our generous audience yeah. and thank, thank you, you to Grace for setting us up and to Laura. Is Laura still there? Can we say hello to Laura? Yes, <laughs> she's here. <laughs> so we all want to see Laura. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening in Barcelona and a wonderful afternoon and morning. Thank Good you, Mary. Bye-bye.